The Latino Theater Company strongly supports and stands in solidarity with their Asian, Asian American, and Pacific Islander colleagues. They uncategorically denounce the acts of hate that have been exacerbated during the pandemic. While the media coverage might fade, the Latino Theater Company strives to remember. In collaboration with Playwrights Arena, we've commissioned five Asian, Asian American, and Pacific Islander playwrights for a series of monologues that humanize the AAPI experience. As a community, we need to continue to give voice to the joy, talent, and rich cultural diversity of the AAPI community and stand up against the acts of violence hurled at our friends. We would like to thank the artists participating in this event and those watching at home. Thank you for your support as we continue to uplift and listen to one another. Please enjoy the Escuchan series curated by the Latino Theater Company and Playwrights Arena. We have Mapa Nimata, written by Giovanni Ortega, performed by Brandon English. Amongst friends at a gathering hosted by Tita G at that pop-up kitchen, we were both wearing masks. There was eyes, apaka, Ungay, puppy dog eyes, we call it Tito. Parashan Nahihia. I was looking straight at sadness in someone's soul at the same time. Can I look at your palms to see the atlas of your history? So, Nikita ko. Ay, nako, there's a problem. What happened? This nunal is small. You're going to have a hard time finding love. But I always fall in love fast, and that's how we fell. Literally, 4.2 earthquake. Napaka ele talaga. I don't recall how things were back then. All I can remember was we walked back that night together after the small gathering, not ready to be alone. Nobody wanted to be alone, but many were isolated. On the corner of Sunset and Alvarado, somebody yelled, Fat Bakla. We both turned. So what? Hala. Makikipagawayan. We both laughed instead, and the car sped off. At a nearby lake filled with homeless people singing about longing, he gave away the baon we had from the party. Adobong, gata, and lumpia, zakat, alms for the poor. Mazampala. Nakikipag, tansingan yan. He's flirting. <laughs> but I really couldn't tell because his eyes were filled with sadness or maybe hope holding my hand and scratching my palms yeah hope while breaking curfew at that moment I fell and didn't have to find love I fell right into it and that's how we met you asked, don't make that face. So, take your time. You don't have to look so much to find it because you might literally just fall. But make sure when you do, you love that person as much as I love your papa. Mahalin na, mahalin mo siya. Tulog na, anak. It's getting late kasi. Mm-hmm. 
We will have Brick, written by Velina Hasu Houston, performed by Jacqueline Misaye Lee. We can't be stuck in this rut forever. It's a sinkhole. They hit us, they run. They get caught, nothing or very little happens. But this time I took a picture of the license plate. This time, no more Shikata Ganai. It can be helped. He planned it. He found a brick, put it in his car, and waited for a certain kind of person to come along so he could throw it. Maybe he has a whole sack of bricks in his car. When he threw it at me, he yelled, go back to your own country. I wanted to yell back, hey, this is my country. I am a U.S. citizen, you hemorrhoid. (sighs) Then it dawned on me. I recognized the guy. No, I I don't know him, know him, but in college he hung around with Kaylee. Kaylee from work. So should I forget about it like a hit and run? Or, Or is it time for hit and payback? I mean, this scum is in the corners of my life. Every time I see Kaylee, I'm going to think about him. His family probably thinks he's so good. Would never hurt a fly. But he's happy to hurt an Asian. Which means he is not so good. To go around pretending to be normal and then to have so much hate inside of you that you put bricks in your car and go Asian hunting. These days he feels he has the right to express his hate out loud. Well, I have some rights to exercise too. (laughs) Like that Chinese woman up in San Francisco, yeah, she got it right. If some hillbilly hits you, pick up a board and clunk him over the head with it. Because we have the right to go to the store. Go to the bank. Go for a walk around the neighborhood without fear of being beaten up or killed. It's on. There will be Made in America, written by Annette Lee, performed by Nancy Ma. A young woman, Asian in appearance, behind a sewing machine. She resets the fabric under the machine and continues to sew. She could be 20 or 30 years old. It's hard to tell because she is Asian in appearance. She sews and thinks. She wonders how ironic it is that the world has made this happen. That the very job that crippled her mother's arthritic hands, hands sew thousands of collars, cuffs, sashes, and other piecework for the garment industry had found its way back to her. She used to sit at her mother's feet many years ago under the powerful engine of the industrial machine roaring away in her ears. <laughs> Tiny, she clipped apart hundreds of cuffs and turned endless sashes inside out with her ultra-long chopstick. She threaded miles of elastic through fabric channels with her tiny deft hands. 
tiny thread clippings covered her as she tried to brush them off with her hands, but they only clung to her clothes and covered her more. Noi Noi, her mother said. You do this with me now, but you will go to school and you don't have to ever do this again. Her mother said this over the roar of the machine. But this is a work of an invisible people. People wear these clothes have no idea who put them together or how hard we work. They only care that it says made in America. This young woman was made in America and she was a paralegal until two weeks ago when the virus spread all to a stop. There's no longer work to go to. No soap on shelves, no toilet paper, no rice, no masks. As she dug through her mother's long abandoned garment and street goods for fabric, elastic and thread, she sewed a mask. Then two and three and more. Hundreds of masks for hundreds of people because they needed them. They needed to be protected. She cared for these strangers, so she sewed frantically with these hands that were more familiar with a keyboard than a sewing machine. And these long forgotten scales were resurrected. And they still clung to her like tiny threads. Hmm. The past is not so easily brushed off. This mask is for a lady in Texas. Would this woman still want it if she knew that the person who made it was 20 or 30 years old, or more importantly, Asian in appearance? Would she blame her for the virus and just refuse to take her mask that was sewn with such care and concern? No matter how far away she gets from this humbling work, the world will send it right back to her. Then she sews another mask and another. They are all made in America. Even if the people who receive them don't think the maker is made in America. Mono, written and performed by Ken Narasaki. First time I became aware of race, I was the one being racist. To be fair, I was six and didn't know what I was doing. But there was an older girl, maybe fourth grade, crossing the playground, and my friend said, look at that blackjack. I didn't know what he was talking about, but being an idiot, I joined him when he started taunting her with blackjack, blackjack, blackjack. And the girl, who was black, began chasing us. And my white friend got away, but she tackled me to the ground hard. Pinning me down, she said, I can see your stupid friend saying stupid shit, but you, why you? Don't you know that I can call you a yellow jack? I had no idea what she was talking about. It was already the mid-1960s, though, and I started hearing plenty about race and racism from the TV. And also, my dad sat me down to talk about white people and why you can't trust them. In the seventh grade, I learned about the World War II internment camps, and that not only blew my mind, but it also infuriated me. How could this happen to my parents when they were kids? My sweet aunts, uncles, grandparents. After that, I had a real chip on my shoulder about race, and from my teens through my 30s, I was in maybe three or four physical fights that began with a racial slur. I had a bottle thrown at my head while kids yelled Chinese faggot at me. Wrong on both accounts. Someone threw a brick through our San Francisco bedroom window on the 50th anniversary of Pearl Harbor. It landed on my baby's changing table. I've probably been in at least a dozen verbal skirmishes, mostly on the west side, in places like Costco, or twice, a Trader Joe's parking lot, or most often the street. 
This all abruptly stopped the time my hair started turning gray. I have two theories. First, I sort of lost that chip on my shoulder. And second, maybe even racists respect their elders. Or so I thought. Now the worst racism I've ever seen in my lifetime is targeting Asian elders and women. I'm always outraged on their behalf until I remember, oh, yeah, that's right. I'm a fucking Asian elder. I used to think the worst thing about Trump's election in 2016 was knowing how many people were totally fine having a proven white supremacist in the White House. But what's worse is the violent racism he's unleashed on purpose. And now we all have to wear that chip on our shoulders. There Will Be Candy Cleopatra, written by Boney B. Alvarez, performed by Anne Yatkov. So, you see, we have to make sure it's even, all right? We're going for a cat eye like Cleopatra, not like some scary Halloween monster, boo. Get it, boo? Boo! <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Wendy J. I never said I was some kind of queen of comedy. Oh my god. Okay, now I'm gonna look straight ahead. I'm gonna wing it out just like Michonne tells us to. Okay? Now, you see that elongated cat eye shape here? When you put the eye cream on first, everything goes on so smooth. And we love you, Michonne. Oh, Michonne has all the pointers. Our makeup god. Ah! <laughs> Uh, yeah. No, I totally got a tan for any 13. See? Yeah. No, uh, it was just in my backyard. Yeah, I rolled out a banig and then I put down a towel and then I just soaked in the sun. Yeah. Oh, no, Wendy J, no fancy stuff. Nah, I just used some Hawaiian Tropic that I found in my bathroom drawer. Yep. Aw, thanks, Brandy13. You know, I wish I could have gotten even darker, but my mom was all like, Candy, you get inside the house now, you will become dark. And I was like, Mom, you're so racist. Oh, she did not like that. <laughs> she flung her flip flop at me. Oh, she was all, get inside this dumb house now. <laughs> Yeah, I know, BJ Boulder, Asian moms be totally low-key racist. Oh, my mom slapped me on the arm as I was coming in the house. I was like, you threw your flip-flop, you go get it. <laughs> what? BJ Boulder mom would never let me do her phase. No. Wait, y'all are crazy. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll ask her, but don't get your hopes up because she thinks makeup is silly. Makeup? For what? Are you an artista? You are not a model. Are you a prostitute? <laughs> oh, yeah, my mom does not play, Gugio. All right, almost done. Yeah. All right, face check. How are we looking? Hmm? What? It does not look all drag like BJ Boulder. Stop. No, thank you, Gugio. I don't look like no damn drag queen. Oh my God. Not that that's a bad thing. I love drag queens. Jujube and kimchi forever. BJ Boulder, stop trying to get me in trouble with drag queens. <laughs> Okay, it's even. All right, now I'm gonna put on eyeshadow. <laughs> I'm using a green today. Oh, it's Sedona green, Franny 13. But it's L'Oreal. Yep, I really wanted the Nova Stratosphere by NARS that Michonne uses, but budget, you know? <laughs> Aw, thank you, Franny 13, you're so sweet. All right, let's see. Now see, this L'Oreal isn't bad, right? Oh, 
Y'all know green is my favorite color. Ugh, this one St. Patrick's Day, I was playing at my babysitter's house in the front yard with her grandson. Now, I, I forget his name, but we kept pinching each other even though we were both wearing green. <laughs> now, oh my God, I don't know, Gugio? Okay, maybe we were crushing on each other. Oh my God, I don't know. We were like nine. Ugh. Look, I didn't want him to pinch me anymore. So I was like, hey, the driveway isn't green. But then he was like, you can't pinch a driveway. So I grabbed leaves off of all these bushes and sprinkled them on the driveway and was like, we have to turn the driveway green. And so we were just running around pulling leaves off all the trees and bushes and just totally covered half the driveway when the babysitter came out. <gasps> oh my God, she hit us with the walis. Mm. Oh, it's a broom, Wendy J, a Filipino broom. And that shit hurt. <laughs> then we had to sweep up all the leaves and stuff with the walis. It was so sad. The driveway was so pretty. Okay, everyone, I'm gonna put a layer of gold now, just under the brow. Hmm? Oh, it's it's a regular brush, Brandy 13. No, I totally want the MAC 864. I mean, that brush is like $60. <laughs> right, Gugio? We should totally start playing the lottery. <laughs> okay. You know, they had face painters in Egypt. That's what they would call them. Like, it was an actual job. <laughs> Could you guys have, like, seen me in Egypt? One of Cleopatra's face painters? Oh my god. <laughs> Just a little bit more. Okay. Now, you see how the thin line of gold just makes my eyes more prominent? Like, they look huge. I think Michonne would be proud. <laughs> what? For real, BJ Boulder? Me, a goddess? Stop. <laughs> Egyptian. Uh, no, no, I don't, BJ Boulder. Oh, wait. Let me see what it looks like with a... And there. Oh, I love Jasmine. She's so cute. <gasps> yeah. Dubai Princess? Gogio, you're too much! <laughs> no, I... I do look like I... I... Uh, I could be Middle Eastern, right? Yeah! <laughs> oh, thanks, Wendy J. <laughs> yeah, this is... This is good, yeah. If I, um... If I leave the house like this, I, I won't be mistaken for, um, no one will think that. No one will want to punch me. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to watch tonight's programming. 